Hello, welcome to 8.9 News. I'm Finn Locustain. The FAIR Initiative has published a study that assesses the regenerative agriculture claims of 79 global agri-food businesses. Joe Raven is FAIR's Director of Thematic Research and Corporate Innovation. I asked her about the study's key takeaways. So over the last four years, FAIR has seen the number of commitments on regenerative agriculture increase, and we wanted to do a deep dive to understand company ambition on this topic. So we looked at a total of 79 agri-food companies and found that 50 of these recognize regenerative agriculture as a solution to the climate and biodiversity crises. But the majority of these companies, including names like Chipotle, Domino's and Costco, have yet to establish formal targets to actually support these public statements. And if you drill down further, these companies that do have targets in place, well, there, there is considerable variation across these. So comparing company ambition level is difficult at this stage. FAIR found that farmer based targets to be the least common um, out of all the targets in place. In fact, only four of the 50 companies that publicly endorse regenerative agriculture have any sort of financial commitment in place to support farmers and their supply chains, which is surprising given farmers are at the heart of any successful agricultural strategy. You cite Nestle, PepsiCo and JBS as examples of global companies that are walking the walk on regenerative agriculture. What are they doing that the others aren't? Nestle, PepsiCo and JBS, they they have set financial targets to support farmers and their supply chains to incentivize the uptake of regenerative practices. Also, Sodexo's Good Eating Company is dedicating 15% of its food budget to regenerative agriculture. But specifically, Nestle has provided what is looking to provide 1.3 billion by 2025 to support the adoption of regenerative agriculture practices across its supply chain. JBS, for example, is looking to provide 100 million US dollars by 2030 to support R&D towards emission reductions, including regenerative agriculture, but also soil carbon sequestration and technologies for supply of farmers while PepsiCo is looking to provide at least 260 US dollars um million 260 million US dollars by 2030 to support the adoption of regenerative agriculture in the US. So that's a lot of money. Presumably they also have strategies in place to back up the investments. They do. And but I think the the point here is that that these companies are taking action. They've got these overarching strategies, ambition levels, statements of intent, but ultimately statements of intent need to be supported by by something more tangible. And these, we find that these examples of these particular companies for us does demonstrate that some action is being taken to de-risk the transition from conventional to regenerative practices for their farmers. But we need to see a lot more of this happening across the sector. Now, you say that the lack of a global definition for regenerative agriculture is a challenge. But many farmers would say that they don't need a definition to understand the principles, that regen is not about practices, but outcomes, and that delivery is entirely context specific. So who is the lack of a global definition a problem for? So the challenge highlighted is the absence of this internationally agreed definition on regenerative agriculture, but rather the ESG benefits that it brings. So the lack of clarity makes it difficult to substantiate claims to understand what role will regenerative practices play in mitigating climate and biodiversity risk for the agri-food sector. It also leaves companies exposed to regulatory and reporting framework changes. It's a challenge for both investors and companies For investors, the lack of a formal definition creates difficulties when assessing corporate commitments and trying to compare related disclosure to understand what are the ambition levels, what's the progress that's been made or hasn't been made. Investors, therefore, need to establish as a first step, what is the company actually looking to to achieve with these? Mm -hmm. And for companies, alignment on strategy and shared expectations from regenerative initiatives could also be improved with a formal definition or even a framework for guiding what good company action and disclosure looks like. But ultimately, given the the, the traction this term has gained, there's significant variations in strategy, implementation, the expectations of what regenerative practices can and should deliver. 
trying to benchmark and assess accountability is just incredibly challenging at the moment. So consensus is needed. Now, in the report, you say that FAIR is supportive of regenerative agriculture, but you're also sounding the alarm to potential investors about the possibility of greenwash. What are your particular concerns in terms of the financial risk? FAIR recognises the role of regenerative agriculture in helping to build resilience within supply chains and the potential that it has to transform our global food system. But it's it's important to note that on its own, it will not fix the challenges that we face. It needs to be part of a dual approach to food system transformation that addresses both existing production, but also consumption patterns. For corporates, the benefits achieved through regenerative practices, they need to be considered as part of existing commitments, especially when it comes to scope three emissions. For example, carbon related outcomes is one of the most commonly cited benefits, but less than half of the companies are actually linking it to their scope three targets. And then this number gets even smaller at 8% when you consider those that are actually trying to quantify the contribution of regenerative agriculture to their emissions reductions. So with increasing regulatory risks for the different agri-food companies, especially in the European market, investors, they need to pay attention to any claims and ambitions being made. The EU Green Claims Directive, which is effective from 2026, requires food companies that are marketing in the EU to substantiate their claims, including those related to regen agriculture, with penalties that could even reach 4% of annual turnover for non-compliance. And just finally, Joe, what do you think needs to happen now to protect potential investors? There's study demonstrates that there needs to be more transparency, more commitments, and especially financial support within the sector. Endorsing regenerative practices is not enough. Companies need to establish formal roadmaps, including integrating the benefits that can be achieved into existing climate commitments. With the rapidly evolving regulatory landscape, companies that don't establish clear targets and substantiate their claims could face financial, but also reputational risks. So some consensus needs to be needs to occur behind a definition of what regenerative agriculture means to support this consistent reporting that will help companies ultimately avoid some of these risks, but will also help investors with the transparency and the comparability they need when assessing their portfolio companies. That was Joe Raven from the FAIR Initiative. More about this and our other headline news on our website, 8.9.com. That's all for now. We're back soon. Thanks for watching.